Hello lovely people, welcome to another book chat, the uh, weekly round of stuff I've read at some point in my past. That's the one. Sophie vlogs. I have three books I want to talk about this week. I will just crack on. I'm going to kick things off with Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. This is my first Zen Cho book, but it's definitely not going to be my last because I had a really fun time and I'm really interested in her as an author in general. This is a fantasy book set in the Regency era. We follow Zacharias, who is the first black sorcerer royal, and he's facing a lot of discrimination as a result. Um, and then also English magic is in a very bad state. Magic appears to be running out and he's trying to figure out what's happening whilst also keeping alert because there are plots and things against him. We also have Prunella, who is an orphan who wants to escape the life of drudgery that has been assigned to her. She herself has magical gifts. The two of these characters sort of meet and then shenanigans ensue. I had a really fun time with this. I see this compared to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell because of this sort of like Regency era magic, um, the way that this is um, a society, like a magical society with lots of rules and sort of like ideas of um, class coming into it with like gentlemen who use magic and the lower classes um, are not allowed to progress in these societies, stuff like this. I definitely see that. I think that if you come into this expecting a similar sort of like writing style and plot structure, you'll be disappointed because these are different entities. But I do understand why it's used as a shorthand for sort of like the type of society that this is showing. Um, I saw a lot of reviews of this that said that they found it really boring at the start. There were a lot of people complaining of how it was really slow and it took ages to get to the plot. I did not have that experience at all. Partly, I guess, because I felt like the beginning was really sort of setting up for us, like, this society, who Zacharias is, who Prunella is, the difficulties they face with different facets of identity, like, affecting how they are allowed to interact with these societies and stuff like this. Um, definitely it really kicks up pace towards the end and then there are quite a lot of twists and developments towards the end so like I don't I'm not saying it's unreasonable to have found the pacing difficult as a reader it's just I personally didn't experience that myself I think just because I was really intrigued by what was happening and I did feel like I, I did feel like we were going places at the start I felt like we were piecing little pieces together of Okay, well, what is the state of magic? What is happening here? I also just did really appreciate the way that this did tackle things like um, how Zacharias's race um, affects the way that he is treated. The relationship he has with um, essentially his mentor who adopted him as a child, freed him from slavery, but left his parents enslaved. There's a real complexity there with their relationship in regards to, like... Um, on the one hand, there is a lot of love because this is a father figure to him, but then on the other hand, there is all of this conflict because there are all these questions of, um, did he just pick him because um, he was an experiment? Did he, is, the, is there care there? And even if there is care there, why wasn't there care extended to his family and people like him? That kind of thing. And then equally with Prunella, the way that we examine the position of women within this society and how that is very intrinsically linked to class. Working class women are allowed to um, use magic as long as they're just using it for um, enhancing their work. You know, use magic to help with your cleaning while you're doing all of your stuff. Whereas upper class women are not allowed to engage with magic because it is viewed as sullying and corrupting. And they're very explicitly... Um, have to like bind their magic and it causes a lot of damage to them but that's viewed as an acceptable sacrifice. I just felt like she handled these topics in a way that I personally found were making some really excellent points. There were some really delightful moments in this, specifically with Prunella learning magic. Um, she like learns to ride a cloud, stuff like that. I found Prunella really interesting because she is so, um, she's very confident, she's very determined. Um, there are some twists and turns, there are some moments in this that made me gasp either in delight, um, there was one reveal that made me gasp with delight, there was one reveal that made me gasp with like sheer heart-wrenching um, sorrow, I guess? So essentially this is just a novel that I found really fun. These are definitely elements that are sort of buzzwords for me and I really enjoyed the way that they were handled and um, I just had a really good time. I have the sequel of this on my Kindle. I read this on my Kindle and then I bought this copy because I wanted to own it. <laughs>
<laughs> I might do the same thing with the second book. I haven't even mentioned Mac Gingang, but I also loved her. Essentially, there is a conflict happening elsewhere in the world that um, the British Empire is sort of hedging and refusing to commit either way to supporting either side. So then there are different people petitioning and I think the second book is following that and I'm really interested to see how that is going to go. Um, but yeah, an, an, an author that I am very intrigued by. I also did a reread, I reread Fellowship of the Rings, essentially. I've been playing a lot of Lego Lord of the Rings and then I decided that I wanted to reread Fellowship. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if I have too much to say on this because essentially I just did this reread because I just really wanted to. You know, sometimes you yearn for something. I yearned for Lord of the Rings. I really enjoyed the slower pace of Fellowship. Objectively, like, it takes a really long time for any for us to get places in this one. You know, it takes so long to really get to Rivendell. I kind of enjoyed taking my time with it. I read this, uh, my brain has been a bit full lately. And so just, like, settling in and the, f the familiarity of lots of this with also realising all of the small details that I've forgotten kind of paired together to make a really delightful reading experience for me. Tolkien's writing style is definitely not one that will work for everyone. I really like his descriptions. I loved, like, um, Lothlorien was a real highlight for me and sort of trying to picture and imagine this world and then this sense of being slightly apart from time. And then also this sense of um, Lothlorien is this beautiful, amazing place and they all feel very sad to leave, but also the sense that it is not what it once was or rather it might be like the final bastion of what more places in Middle-earth once were. So like, permeated throughout this, uh, within all of the comforting familiarity and the glory of like how sweet the Shire is and how um, like dark the woods that they travel through and the Barrow White and all that sort of thing, I really felt like I was, I was being aware of at the edges the, the sense that like, the world is fading slightly, things that once were are no longer, and things are passing from present to past, and there are these people, like some of these elves and stuff like this, who are still there, but that is going to change, and that's probably going to change quite soon. So then you go from like the Shire and everything that the Shire is, and then you go into some of these darker places, and then you come to these moments of brightness, which is like Rivendell and Lothlorien, um, I don't know, I, I really appreciated sort of sitting with the descriptions and sort of trying to imagine everything. I just, I found it really comforting, I found it really warm. I also just do really enjoy these characters. I think sometimes like separating out in my head like what is film characterization versus what is it actually like here. Um, I don't know, I don't have too much to say because everyone's talked about these books endlessly <laughs> and there's people who can verbalize it all much better than me but um i just had a really lovely time i really enjoyed rereading it this is the first time i've reread it um i read it for the first time last year so um i'm just having a really lovely time it's gonna pop up again soon i'm gonna keep going with my journey um the final book is one that i had more mixed feelings on this is uh the first book of the vinyl detective series written in dead wax by andrew cartmel this is like a mystery series and it's really um based around like music and vinyl and specifically like jazz this is lent to me by my mum because we both really enjoy the rivers of london series this guy is a friend of ben aronovich and um, there's a lot of comparisons you can make between writing styles. I think that the sort of style and tone and humour is very evocative of Rivers of London, but personally I felt like Rivers of London did everything better than this did. <laughs> Maybe I would feel slightly more favourable to this if I was more of a jazz fan, because I love music. Music is so important to me, but jazz is not a genre that I really have explored a lot of. No, I'm going to take that back. I don't think it's the jazz. I, I, my, my criticisms are not jazz related. Essentially, our main character is like hired to try and find this really obscure jazz vinyl. This book is sort of like split into, well it is split into part one and part two. So part one is all about him working with this woman called Nevada and they are trying to find this really obscure vinyl. They are trawling around all of these different like charity shops, vinyl fairs, stuff like this, and that was really fun and interesting. My dad used to spend a lot of time going around record shops and that sort of thing to find like his style of music genre, so um, I could really connect to that. Occasionally it dragged on a bit, 
but I understand that that's kind of the point because he's trying to showcase like what it is like if you're like a vinyl enthusiast and like the lengths you go to to find um, what you're looking for and that kind of thing. As they are hunting for this record it becomes apparent that other people are searching for it too. The second part sort of goes down a very different route and the mystery kind of develops and you kind of get a sense of why this particular vinyl appears to have so many people going after it. I enjoyed a lot about this. I found this very easy to read. It was a very quick read. It was a fun time. I appreciated the love of music at its heart. Um, I do have some niggles that meant that I rated this a two stars. I definitely think that this could have been shortened. I've already said that sort of like the trawling through things does take a while. What I was actually frustrated with is in the second half there is a code that they're trying to crack and I cracked that code at least a hundred pages before they did. And so that was a bit frustrating because A, the nature of it was it was fairly obvious what the code was, couldn't they have just guessed? I don't always have a problem with under of guessing the mystery before the characters do, if it's done in a way that kind of works. Like sometimes you want to be able to guess the mystery because that means that the author is giving you all the clues. Whereas this, I felt like they were being so dense not to understand what the code said. And then equally, I don't understand why said information was preserved in that way. It seems overly com complex for what it is. In a similar way to that, there were just a lot of moments in this plot-wise that were just intensely convenient. And I am willing to extend a lot of the time like a bit of slack on this because it's like, yeah, like if everything was done completely logically, it would make more sense but also that I would pop I wouldn't have a book to read but in this case it did frustrate me because there were just so many moments that were so convenient uh, frankly I don't understand why no one just killed our main character <laughs> I was like surely this solves all the problems and my two other things that I had niggles about were um none of the female characters in this felt in any way like real human beings there are essentially two women in this whose primary roles are just like they sleep with the main character, they have interests that he can bounce off of, and they somehow find him immensely charming despite the fact that he's just like, a guy? <laughs> they just didn't feel like characters, they felt like stand-ins for our main guy to sleep with and then have a bit of conflict about, but they didn't feel like real people. Similarly, a lot of the humour in this is just not my humour. Like, one of the main characters, I wrote it down because it pissed me off so much, one time they steal two bikes from a lesbian couple and Nevada says do you think I'll catch being a lesbian from sitting on this bicycle saddle and then he says we can only hope and I was like is this a joke <laughs> there were a lot of moments in this which I just found deeply unfunny and I could tell that I was supposed to find them funny as a joke and it just didn't land for me so like again that's like a personal humour thing. Some people will find this really, really funny and they'll think that the women are great, but I am not that person. Um, I've been lent the first three books of this series. I'm going to give the second book a go. A, knowing that they're there before I go in is just good because then you're aware of things rather than being a bit thrown off every time they say a joke that doesn't land, you know? And then B, I was told that my mum lent them to me and she said that um, she got into the second book a lot more than the first book. So I'll give it a go. I'll see what it's like. It will probably pop up in a book chat again soon. <laughs> so those are the three books I wanted to talk about this week. Um, I would really love to hear your thoughts on them if you've read them. Um, do leave me a comment down below if you'd like to. Otherwise, I hope you're having a really nice day and I will see you next time for something different.